Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. You're watching a weekly show called Conversations with Fred. I bring in people, men and women from the community, and they talk about upcoming events. They talk about things that will interest you, whether it's a new Bay Bridge or a new school or whatever. And we laugh at it and have a good time. I'm delighted this week. My two guests are Scott McGlashlin and Howard Dean, lifelong residents of Queen Anne's County. We could probably sit here, guys, and just tell <laughs> stories about Queen Anne's County. But we're going to talk about the comp plan in a second. Uh, Scott, hey, Scott, how about introduce yourselves first? Tell folks who you are. Well, I'm Scott McGlashlin, uh, lifelong resident, live in Churchill, live on a dairy farm. Or it was a dairy farm. We raised it on a dairy farm. And you're too modest to say uh, one of the most popular uh, politicians in the history of Queen Anne's well, County. It, it, well, the people in Queen Anne's County were very kind to me. I, I had six elections as, as the clerk of the circuit court. Six, uh, and Judge Ross said you kept him out of trouble for unbelievable well, years. Well, it worked both ways. Okay. You know, and, <laughs> and Judge South kept me out of trouble, too. Okay. You know? and, and a musician. Well, yeah, I love bluegrass, okay. country music. It. So you've done a little bit of everything. Scott. Yeah, right. was in the farm machinery business prior to getting into politics. And Great. Raised on the farm, so, but I'm not production agriculture like this gentleman. Okay, well, is. Howard, Howard's the real thing, isn't he? He's, he's the real, real thing. <laughs> Howard, how about you introduce yourself to Hi, I'm Howard Dean. I've been a farmer all my life. My father, grandfather, great grandfather were all farmers. Some from, they lived in Roosburg at one time, and my father uh, bought a farm in Churchill, and I, that's where I've been farming all my life. I have okay. four farms. Um, glad to be a farmer, love agriculture. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we're here for. You love it, and you do it, and you've been lucky to do it for now. How many years now, Howard? Uh, quite a few. I don't know the exact number. <laughs> okay. but quite we a won't few. give any secrets. <laughs> no, right. no, we're not going to do that. And you're like Scott, too modest to admit you. Your uh, sister and brother-in-law, probably two of the finest educators in Queen Anne's County, Kay and Al Romanowski. That's you're right. Very proud of them. I had the pleasure. Al was a counselor. Uh, when I was teaching there, and of course, Kay was a wonderful English teacher and a vice principal. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you come from not only the ag side, but education, you got us covered. Now, Scott, what did you guys want to talk about there? Someone told me you wanted to talk about the comp plan. What is it, and what do we, what do we want to talk about? Well, interestingly enough, <coughs> and Howard and I are neighbors uh, in Churchill, but because of COVID, uh, but the county has a comprehensive zoning plan that by code has to be revisited every 10 years. Okay. And, and rewritten and tweaked. And, and what is it? Let me, let me interrupt. It's just what a vision, it? yeah. really. Okay. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's a vision of where citizens of Queen Anne's County want to see their, and I, I'll say their, capital T H E I R, okay. county to go and, and how they want to develop. And so <laughs> Howard and I, we, we live about an air mile, about a mile apart, but we don't see each other that, that often. You're working. And, you're both working. That's right. right. And, and uh, he's farming. And I've been farming with my brother-in-law since I retired, Billy Mason, out at Roosburg, Mason's Heritage. And, and, um, but uh, so the plan comes up, well, because of COVID, they use Zoom. Okay. And so Howard called me one day. He said, I see you, your name on the Zoom. And we got to talking, and one thing led to another. And, and, and both he and I are concerned about the future of Queen Anne's County and agriculture, production okay. agriculture. Now, the comprehensive plan, just to summarize what you said, is basically a 10-year plan, which every 10 years we go back and look at. Exactly. And it's a roadmap, right, Howard, of where right. we want to be as a community. Yeah. And it's something that we should all be interested in, because I want to know what's going on in upper county, lower county, right. whatever. And let me just say before, Howard, let me, oh, ask you, Howard, do we have input as citizens? I mean, you talked about zooming. Okay. Absolutely. How, how do, how That's do what do? the comp plan is okay. to get the citizens of the county in to to talk about what they would like to see with the county. So, if you're watching this show and the when the comp plan plan comes up for discussion, you can get whether it's live meetings or Zoom like we're doing Absolutely. now. Absolutely. You can put input. That's right. Or even write in. Okay. Um, of course, we're we're for agriculture. We would like to see agriculture really saved. From well, from there's agriculture on Ken Island too, right. but from Queenstown on to Millington, that's what we'd like to see. So ideally, we whether we like it. If I lived on Ken Island, I'm delighted to have all the stores. I'm delighted to have the growth. But right. perhaps you and Scott, and that's what we're going to talk about. They would like to see it. There's a little bit of dividing line, and perhaps the upper part of the county. Scott, am I saying this right? Correct. Could we, well go ahead. Tell me what you. Well, envision. no, you're absolutely right, Fred. And and when you stop and. You know, if you did an aerial overview of the Delmarva Peninsula in, in Maryland, here you have, let's say, New York, Boston, 
Philadelphia, Wilmington. It's a corridor, it's right? It's a corridor down there. And here we are within basically two, three hour uh, transportation of those. That's our market. And here we are in Delmarva, production agriculture. This gentleman raises corn, soybeans, maybe some wheat. And But the Delmarva Peninsula, I said to Doug Gansler one, some number of years ago, I said, Doug, you know, be careful how you treat the integrators, the Purdue's, the Tyson's, those people. I said, because Delmarva is a corn deficit area. He didn't understand what I meant. What I meant was that we can't grow enough corn on Delmarva to supply the poultry industry. That's where he and, and ultimately I do, because I'm not production agriculture. We, we rent our farm to a good farmer, and uh, that's their market for the crop. So what that does, it's like Martin O'Malley when he, when he had the smart growth in, in, the, in the, the green zones. That's where the, the development should be is around the existing towns. That's right. right because right. of, we've heard a big word, infrastructure. Well, infrastructure. Hottest here. topic in America right, right. now, right? Exactly. So Washington, sure. D.C. Yeah, to California. Right. But That's the big right. thing is water and sewer, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but there seems to some people have gotten upset. We, we, well, what Howard and I did, we talked and we came up with a vision statement. And he and I went out and, of course, you know me, being an ex-politician, you're not afraid to, afraid to speak up, but Izzy Howard, you're not afraid to speak up. And I love to talk to people. Good. So I, being retired when I wasn't working with Billy, I'd go out on the farms, and Howard did also. He And we we showed this vision statement, and I bought a copy with me, but it's simply a vision statement of where, do you agree with this, where you think we should go? Agriculture is the largest uh, volume business, dollar-wise, in Queen Anne's County. Right. You know what's second? Hunting and fishing. Hunting and fishing. That's right. Well, yeah. what a minute, let me just interrupt for a second. Howard, you guys, I mean, uh, whether people agree or disagree, you can see well, if we don't plan this out. We know the growth is coming from the West. That's I right. mean, we know we've done Ken Island, right. and we're marching up to Graceville. Coming what's from scary the north, to me? Coming from the what's north. What's happening in Middletown, Delaware? That's right. Okay? That's right. Middletown, when we moved here 45 years ago, Howard, I'm sure when you were growing up long before that, was basically nothing. You you would uh, you blinked your eyes. You missed it. And if we, my relatives who all live in Scott and those in Boston, they when they leave Boston, Howard, they don't hit fields until they get right up the road here. Good point. In Queen Anne's right, County. Right. I and you you tell me, we've got to feed the animals to feed us. We have to feed the people. And if we don't have people like yourself farming and we don't protect farmland. We're in trouble, but I'll be quiet. Go ahead. No, no, you're absolutely Agriculture right. in Queen Anne's County generates over $180 million a year. So it's a money, that I was, mean, we make was, money at That was yeah? three mm -hmm. years ago on a census. Okay. It's probably much more than that now. The expense is around $130 million on that $180 or $90 million income. So that creates a lot of jobs for people. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, tremendous uh, John Deere dealers, international dealer, mm -hmm. the grain market people, Nagel. Uh, Purdue, uh, Mount Air, uh, Wenger up to Massey, all they're around us in a kind of a little little uh, V shape sure. or a, a C shape. And um, <clears throat> it means a lot to the shore. If we lose agriculture here on the shore, there won't be any more agriculture or land uh, for agriculture until you get down south that we need to preserve this area. You know, Howard, one of the biggest things I have, and Scott, and we're going to go back to your mission statement, because I, I, I want you to read it or do whatever you want with it. Uh, when I go see my relatives in Boston, or I go to New York and see a play, you know, you take a deep breath. I leave New York City. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't see trees. I don't see a good quality of life. I don't see rural America till I get up here as I leave Middletown, Delaware, and get into Maryland, I, was, I think I started up with Kent County, and then Queen Anne's, you see trees and farms, and you just you're not afraid to open the windows anymore. All and you we, see is development, <laughs> yes. infrastructure, and, and um, asphalt. And my friends tell <clears throat> me in Delaware uh, that their Department of Transportation is already putting out films on how 301 will become a full, you know, double the lanes. And that would you go 95... Um. You know, 95 goes the length of the country. You can skip Baltimore, right? And if, if you know differently, please tell me. Right. And you can skip Baltimore, jump off, yes. get off the Wilmington Bridge. How are they going to dump all this East Coast traffic on 95 up here? The only thing that's saving us right now, they can't, we, our roads aren't good enough. 
I mean, you, so the pressure to preserve what you want to preserve is going to be unbelievable in the next yes. 20 or 30 years. Yes. Trip Callahan tells me, to, and I'll be quiet in a second, there's not a week, Howard, doesn't go by when a car doesn't pull up with New Jersey and New York tags, the Pennsylvania tags. Mr. Callahan, would you, and he lives in Roosburg, would you like to sell your farm? You know, and these are developers mm -hmm. and are offering them great price. Now, you know, it's just... That pressure is un unbelievable, right, on the farming community and what you produce. Uh... Well, and, that, and you're absolutely right. And, and that's when it gets to the point where the farmer can't make money, well, then that's, that's going to put the pressure on and for development. Oh, yeah. But, that, but as it is now, I mean, farming is a hard way to make a living, but, but so are a lot of jobs. Sure. But farmers farm because they love it and, and if they can generate income, that preserves the open space. That's right. And the heritage, because... For instance, Mason Farms, that's six generation. I keep reading sixth articles generation. in the paper, we're losing our, our small farmers, right? When oh, I say really? small farmers, because the multinationals have come in, the developers have come in. I mean, at some point, what do we, where do we go for food? We can't chop down all the trees in the Amazon, can we, Howard? No. <laughs> the, the heritage of Queen Anne's County is watermen and farmers. Yes. 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 That's where it all started, right there. And we're losing a lot of that. If we don't do something about think. We need to think 20 or 30 years ahead instead of 10 yes. years ahead. It's not all development. It's not all 95s and large. But, Scott, look, I interrupted you before. Go back to your mission statement. If you'd like to read yeah. parts of it or paraphrase it, or give us exactly yeah. what you're looking for. We've got plenty of time. But the interesting thing about this, this and it's, it, it, it wasn't a petition. I, I don't like petitions, but, no. but Howard and I agreed it. It was a vision statement. We said, what do we envision? What do you want for Queen Anne's County? And it starts off with the undersigned farmers, farm uh, land owners, and others committed to maintaining Queen Anne's County agriculture economy and rural heritage support the following and urge the Queen Anne's County commissioners and the county planning department to include these views as part of the 2021 comprehensive plan update. And we go ahead to say we support the 2010 Comprehensive Plan vision statement of keeping Queen Anne's County a quintessential rural community of small towns connected by creeks and county roads through fields and forests. Do they, do, do, does the public and our public officials kind of agree? Where, where are we in the well, acceptance of these things? Ironically, and we'll go over each Howard, one. Howard and I found out when we went, because literally we've got over 140 signatures. That's true. Of different yeah people, farmers, but what, what I learned, you know, I'm 74 years old, just like you. We're in trouble. But, but I'm, I'm always learning. Sure. And, and of course, when I was in selling farm equipment, you make cold calls, mm -hmm. and that's what basically Howard and I did, we're making cold calls. Almost without exception, maybe a couple, but without exception, people read this and, and were, said, I want to sign this. Okay. I support okay, Good this. response, good that's response. Right. One of the problems in agriculture, though, is farmers are great people. But they're 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 very private people, sure. and they won't go to meetings. There was a, the meeting in Sellersville, and Howard spoke, and I spoke. Then I was in another meeting a week later, and there were five other people in that room that were at that meeting, and they then at an hour meeting they wanted to make statements. I said, "Why didn't you say something at Sellersville? Our county commissioners need our help. Need to hear from us. Yeah, our sure. planning commission needs our help and input." Those people are sitting there as citizens also. Sure. And sometimes politicians take a cheap shot, you know, and, and sometimes deservedly. Sure. But, but we're fortunate. We've got county commissioners. They'll that listen, listen to you. They'll listen to you. Listen They'll listen to you. But uh, as the state's largest grain-producing county, we support any and all efforts to maintain that distinction. It's our number one cash crop, exactly. right? I mean, why would we, why would we not want that? Number I mean, one. if you lived in New York City, it's Broadway or whatever. Ours right. is corn and whatever the other we're producing. Yeah. Right. I mean, why not support your profitable business? You talk about economic development. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where we are. Scott, let me just interrupt for a second. Well, it's How, already here. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. already here. Howard, to the people watching, and many live on Ken Island, what's a guesstimate? Now, it's a guesstimate number of people, you mentioned companies earlier, that are farmers are, are driving trucks to take... I mean, how many people would you guess actually work in agriculture in this county? A ballpark for you. I'm not going to... Well, you know. I think there's 400 farmers. Okay. Uh, four to 500 farmers, and that's an estimate. That's the whole county? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That um, their name is in the FSA office as the operator. Right. But then you have truck drivers... 
Uh, that's hard to put a number on yeah, that. And good. workers in agriculture. People that selling seeds, seeds, fertilizer. John, yeah. I work for John Deere, work for International, right. uh, work for Nagel Grain Dealers, Purdue, all of that. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a tremendous it's a number. So if we pave everything over and just become a rest stop like we have in the New Jersey oh. Turnpike, we're going to lose you would Maybe lose thousands all that. of jobs. Yeah, you would lose. And all plus, that. what Scott said, the generations of families like yourself, who have worked the land, and they become quick shops, or they become motels, and I don't yeah. think so. We, okay. And we wouldn't have any any land to leave to future generations right. to see how we love farm and ha leave the open space to see what it's like. It would be all. Blacktop. A good friend of yours, Bill Moore, born yeah. and raised in the center, who now lives in oh, Canada, yeah. both of you know him, oh, yeah. he says to me that all the time. He says, Fred, people visit me from urban areas, whether it's Washington, Baltimore, Philly, wherever, and they just say, drive me out in the country. Huh. What do you mean? What we take for granted. We've been talking before we went on air about the deer we've seen behind yes. Center of Elementary. Now, for farmers, that's a touchy to a topic. Yes, it is. But for many people... Uh, seen wildlife, which we take for granted. Right. Wild turkeys running around the road. That's right. Please, you Scott. make a good point there, and, and Howard and I have talked about this. We're lifelong residents of the county, sure. and, and we take for granted. Oh. And, and, and we should be horse whipped because we, we, we just we take it for granted. Other people come here and they say, this is God's country. It's a local phone call when you get here. I don't <laughs> yeah. think we take it for granted. We just overlook it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I, I think yeah, overlooking right. is more the... My yeah. good friend Bill Moore, which you know, they had a, a Centerville High School reunion in the last couple of weeks of the class of 63. Mm -hmm. And he said, Bill told him the story. Bill and I, as you know, helped Sheriff Hoffman. We ride up and down the trail with the Sheriff's Department. The people from Baltimore, Northern Virginia, uh, Montgomery County, who say to, me, say to Bill and I, this is the most wonderful place I've ever seen. It's not cement. Why would you want to ruin it? Yeah, and, and then Bill and I <laughs> ride this thing, take it every, take it for granted. And like, right. I think that's probably what yeah. you said. We yeah. don't, we realize what we have, but sometimes, oh, this is fresh air. We want to preserve it for the future. Yes, yeah. That's yes, what we Scott, please keep going down your well, list. Well, the, the thing that, that I, yeah. the Howard and I found, we went out mm -hmm. and, and talking to people, and something that I learned, we learned, was that we were, I was thinking production agriculture farmers mm -hmm, right. to talk to. But then I went out there, also this includes landowners. There are a lot of absentee landowners right, or right. landowners that live on the farm, like myself, that don't till it, physically right. till mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And then there, then there are people, citizens that have no connection with agriculture, That's right. that say, I, when I go to Middletown and go up Route 301, the vista, the farming community, oh, watching beautiful. the farmers through the seasons, through the planting season, through the harvest season, and, and, well, one point here, we support all farmland preservation programs, yes. including Royal Legacy, MALF at Maryland Agricultural Land Preservation Foundation, and county-supported programs, and we urge that the county comprehensive plan reflect our commitment to maintaining the county's agricultural heritage. Scott, Period, exclamation mark. Oh, yeah. so I have, well, I, again, I'm going back to my relatives in Baltimore. Howard, if I just left this building here, go out to 30150, my relatives love just driving, going, heading up the highway and just saying, look at the woods. Look at the, what you and I go by and say, you know, you probably think, man, that's work. But it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it, whatever you believe in made us or made this world, it's just something very special that's right. disappearing on the planet, yes. not just here. The There's planet. another thing, up the 301 corridor. Right. We, we would love to see it stay like it yeah, is. Beautiful. No development off the side. There's no infrastructure there right. for, for development. And just leave it and, and have it like a uh, agriculture byway. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a heritage not only for us, but for my grandchildren. You know, yes. All of us. And, and it's disappearing. I mean, we're chopping. I mean, I'm getting a high pedestal here. We're, I mean, the Amazon forest is going to be disappear. We want the same thing to happen in Queen Anne's County. Right. Well, one day you're going to see nothing but fast food, like I said before. No. Scott, can you, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. Well, you know, but you make a good point there, and Howard and I were talking about this. Down on Kent Island right now, Jim Moran, I thought, did a wonderful article in the paper about the Bay Bridge. And he was one of our guests earlier. Is Jim, that right? Jim and, did a great and, job. And I learned some things. You know, the, tra the highway system, as you mentioned earlier, is geared for 1,500 vehicles an hour. The bridge is geared for 1,200 vehicles an hour. Well, you know, right there points out a little bit of problem there. 
<laughs> but, but it's a it's big It's June problem. 2nd. They're lined up now. I right? know, but I remember, <laughs> July I, 2nd. I can remember going to Holly's Restaurant yeah. when it was oh, yeah. a single lane yeah. Route 50. And then Governor Schaefer came along, reached the beach. Right. And, and of course, even before Changed that was the, the single yeah. bridge, you know, two-lane bridge. Now they went with a three-lane bridge. It should have been a four or six lane bridge, you know, all of me. But, 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 but now that I can remember when people back in the '60s were or '70s were trapped on Queen in in on Kent Island right. because of the traffic. Well, then the lights were eliminated, and they you know had some overpasses, and people got relief down there. Now, guess what? They're right back where they were. Then. <laughs> Those people tell me, people from Kent Island tell me, we don't leave the house. Oh, no. Thursday afternoon. Well, your friend Bill Staff Moore doesn't. Money. He parks his, yeah. matter of fact, he rides his bike, bike. from yeah. the Heritage Center the Heritage Center back to Tennessee Ave on Ken Island because it would take him forever to get back because we right. finish about 12 or 2. Yeah. So I mean, I'd be interested to talk to Paul Comfort. You know, he's a traffic sure. expert. And uh, as far as, but, but, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're, but, uh, but Scott, that, let me just get you before, before you go. Howard, you, both you tell look, the geography dealt us a hand. And yes. uh, one of the things we've got well, two of the things we'll talk about today, with it, we're the only way you can get to the beach. It's never going to change, you know, and probably in our lifetimes, so we're going to have to live with it. My relatives that live on Cape Cod, same thing. Mm -hmm. There's a road there that they know from Memorial Day, right, to Labor Day, don't go on it. And now they're traveling all through the back roads oh. to get to the... Yes. And they're making it brutal, okay? Yeah. And, but the other thing we have that places like the Massachusetts folks don't have... We still have half of the county, which I think we can rescue. Yes, I think that's do. what you're addressing. Good, Scott. Right, please. right, right. But um, the agriculture and forested areas of Queen Anne's County have unique and extraordinary productive soils among the best on the Atlantic coast. Howard can address this issue. Yes, we do. And Howard, can you grow everything here? Pe pretty people much. Can, yeah. Pretty I mean, much everything. Yeah. Well, let me, uh, let me write. What makes a soil so special? Is it just an act of God or is it just... Because we've, we've protected God had a lot it? to do with it. He had a lot to do with it. I guess <laughs> at, one, at one time, uh, all these, uh, all this ground was underwater. Okay. And wow. I guess uh, the nutrients from the the um, the oceans you know, the, or the seas, whatever the seas, so dropped on the land. Okay. And behind home in their stream, we got a, a real large stream runs behind home. There's. Um, about two foot down, you'll see a bed of oyster shells about that deep. You kidding me? All the mm -hmm. way through, oh, wow. mm -hmm. oyster shells. And so oh, we yeah. ha so we have to keep you know, ever how you feel in this issue, we've been given this unbelievably unique environment, and we've made some I think incorrect decisions on part of the county. It doesn't mean they're bad guys or good mm -hmm. guys. It just that's, that that happened, but we do have a chance here, right, Scott, yes, to yeah, do have. something with the, yes. ha the other half. Well, and, and that brings me to a thought when you make that statement that uh, I brought along with me today um, a book that... Why Island. Read, Why sure. Island. Sure. And, and this is a unique book in so much uh, Boyd Gibbons, and I, and I offer it for reading for the general public because it, it tells a story. This, this gets back, and there was a statement made, well, the cover was gone, but why can't there be at least one county where things remain as they are. We don't have to grow. We make we the decision don't. to let it grow, don't exactly. we? Exactly. You know, and, That's right. and thank God why Island was not developed by James Rouse, you know, at least my feeling. Right. And, and, the, and we've missed the bullet in other projects. There was a nuclear power plant issue yeah. That, yeah. At, down at, at um, uh, Pioneer Point sure. at one point. And then we had the sad situation not too terribly long ago where the federal government wanted to buy a prime hunt, a prime property. And they have a training center right. for the Department right. of uh, State Department, yeah. correct? And, and, Tripp and I, Tripp is still throwing bricks at me, Howard, for that one, for what yeah, I felt well, about that one. You know, and, and, and people, we, as you said earlier, we, we get things wrong. I'm a member of Farm Bureau, you know, and unhappily Farm Bureau supported that proposition. Okay. That, that was a sad day. I'm still a Farm Bureau member. I will remain a Farm Bureau member, but they got it wrong as far as I'm concerned. And people will jump and say, well, we have property rights. Well, sure, I believe in property rights, but that's why we have a zoning ordinance. And there, there's, there's, my father told me years ago, and Howard and I were talking yeah. about this just the other night, and his grandfather, he can tell you what his grandfather told me, but my father told me, he said, and this took about five years to sink in my thick skull, he said, son, we have a 358-acre farm. Okay. He said, son, you never own the land. No. You're only a steward for a very short period of time. 
And then what did your grandfather tell you? My, I father, was, my grandfather told me one day we were talking about uh, me buying a farm. And he said, son, I want to tell you something. You'll never own that farm. You just pay to use it while you're going through here. And that's what we need to do with the people. Let them know that we're only using it to go through here and leave yes. it to future generations the way we've come up around it. I take Coach Charlie Nesbitt, I think who you might know, Coach uh, I yeah, was with a K, yeah. and yeah. I know it's yes. Yes. I'll drive, uh, Charlie's now, uh, I think, 87, and I'll drive Years him up. Young. To, uh, 80's young. young. <laughs> I wish I had his energy, and he hits a golf ball twice as far as I do. <laughs> but when I drive him up, we'll occasionally I'll just get him out of his house and drive up 301. He always says, his grandmother, like our grandma, said, God only made so much land. That's right. And we're reaching a point in society, I think, that, you know what, we do have to make some critical decisions. Do we make certain places green spots forever? Well, Howard, here's the, what happens to you if I'm the guy from New Jersey, the developer, saying, Mr. Dean, you own four farms. They're valued at $7.5 million. I'll give you $25 million if you sell them. I mean, how do, you, how do you fight that temptation? How it's do you, a tough one. Yes. You've got to be a devoted farmer. Yes, okay. Devoted farmer. I mean, do we need as a society, you think? I mean, let's think big here. To help the farmers stay in business? Well, that's uh, what MALF has done. Uh, yeah. The, the different programs, you know. That's exactly right. Because farmers can sell their development rights and still, you know, keep the farm. And okay. ironically, from what, well, you're talking about Dick Smith and different realtors have told me, it really doesn't affect the resale value of farms down the road. No, okay. it doesn't. Because it doesn't. the people that are buying these farms, there, there are a lot of people that are not developers that may be from New York, have been successful. They just want to say they hold land. And yeah. they, they want to preserve. Because yeah. the second largest industry, as I pointed out earlier, hunting and fishing. Okay. And and my God, and then your watermen, like Howard said, look at the watermen. I mean, that's, that's income for them. Howard, let me ask you, as my hardworking farmer here, as I drive around Queen Anne's County now, and Scott, you do, I'm seeing more farms who have these amazing arrays of solar collectors. I think Trip Callahan has it. as one out here at 404. I turn the corner there. Is that good for? Is that a, a smart move for farmers? Does that fit in with what you guys are talking about, or not? Well, they're paying real big dividends for that those solar panels or okay. for for that land, up to twelve hundred dollars an acre. But I think the county right now is only allowing so much of so that. some limits, huh? I think the state mandates that, and each county has to allow so much of it. But I hope it doesn't get overboard, so to speak, too much. So we it. have to balance Because it. we we want to keep that land productive, not in just generated electric. We want production from it. We have the chicken growers. They better have corn for the chickens. There's not enough corn here on the shore to feed these chickens or animals. Right. Um, we actually import food to feed import, the We import oh, you know? Yeah, we Brain. import yeah. it. Every yeah. week I've mm -hmm. seen it on... Uh, Purdue has a map, or they did have it down to Ingleside, a map there. <coughs> each one is designated which time of the year uh, it's shipped in. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know. Well, and along what Howard's saying about the solar, is it, personally, I, like working with my fellow, there, there are jib pieces of land on any farm that equipment's bigger now, and it's hard to, to work a, a strange piece of ground. Sure. And if it's in behind the woods where maybe it's out of view, but still effective for solar, and, and it's not really the best land to till. Yeah, I think it makes sense. And okay, a, yeah. here again, Jim Moran, as I understand it, um, there's an, a law that he uh, uh, supported and has been passed that if the solar company comes in and wants to use X amount of That's farm right. acres, they pay, a, they pay a fee for that that goes right. into Royal Legacy okay. to, right. to, 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 to buy development rights. I, okay. I, yeah, that's right. You know. Yeah. Now, let's go, do me a favor. We're going to run out of time here in a minute. So let me, let's, let's get to, if people watching this say, you know what, I like what Howard and Scott are saying. You know, I'd like to be able to see more. How do they get more information from you or from an organization on this topic of preserving or, and making that the comp plan be aware of what you're trying to Feel do. Free. Who should they contact? What case, would you like them to do? E either one of us. In my case, uh, okay. that's right. Four ten four nine zero two seven six four is my cell number. And you don't mind them calling? I People do don't not call. mind them calling at all. Okay. Mine is four one zero seven zero eight two two four five. Okay. Now, if people are saying, hey, "Look, okay, <clears throat> call you," should do you want them calling our county commissioners? Calling our absolutely our state representatives? Yeah. yeah. 
Yes, and, and as I said earlier, that Howard and I were talking about this, that we were in the meeting and we spoke in Sullersville. But there were other people that spoke after or talked to us. They should have stood up and spoke at the meeting because Jim Moran was there. I think Steve Wilson was there. Uh, Jack Wilson was there. So the commissioners are interested. This is what got Howard and I going to start They have to with. hear from the public. If they don't hear anything, they're not going to do anything, exactly right? right. And, and, then, and then to wait till the 23rd hour mm. and then complain? That's so unfair on to the on, on Today's July 2nd, I believe, 2021. What can people do now? Pick up the phone? What would you tell? If someone's out there saying, you know what, I agree with these guys. Well, or, or I disagree with you, which is fine, too. Sure. What, do you want, right. what, what can they do now in July 2nd? Go on the second? Queen's County website okay. and yes. the planning and zoning uh, portion, and there's a whole website, uh, information uh, uh, devoted to the comp plan. Okay. And it gives a schedule of the meetings. Oh, so they still have time to go to meetings? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, great. They can go on Zoom at the meeting. They can come to the, uh, yes. the okay. zoning office here. It's next Thursday, the 8th. I think at July. 9 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. The so there is time to have input. Now, we don't care which side, whether they agree or disagree with us, but you're encouraging Participate. people to get right. out and let the commissioners, because like you said, they believe in the old saying, they have two ears and one mouth. Commissioners listen quite well. That's right. And we can do that. Well, Scott, look at, and Howard, I apologize, our time's about up. I want to have you, Scott, come back another time. I want you guys, I'll get Bill Moore here. Oh, that'd be uh, fun. Tommy Draper. Oh, I'm just going to sit here, and I want you to tell <laughs> Queen Anne's County. I had uh, Joe Connor. Do you know Joe? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Joe, we had him on a half an hour show, and Joe gave us a, a tour of Centerville from 30, 40, 50 years back. Talked about the wars let, let between me take, Let me tell you a little bit Are we still this? on? Yeah, go. go I'd like to say one thing, and then you can do it. <laughs> Please, Queen Anne's County, support us. That's okay. what we, we need support. Without your support, we can't do it by ourselves. No. Speak up. Okay. Speak, Speak up. up. Okay. And yeah. Howard and Scott Kitts, Scott, you, you well, want to Well, I just want to say, this fellow right here, you talk about Billy Moore and Tommy Draper, and oh, he yeah. struck me. I remember he's, he was a couple years ahead of me because he and I both attended Central High School, right. the old Central High School. He was a baseball player, man. I've never seen oh, really? this dude out on the ball diamond. And, he, and you played ball a long time there. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Draper. Well, look, at the last question of the day, it's good that I asked you. They're talking about the decision is, do we take old Centerville High and put $15 million into it and fix it up and make it the Board of Ed, you know, no, which is just, you know, upscale, or do we build a new building right out this back door? As old Centerville High guys, what do you think? <sighs> That's a tough question. Okay. Um, Bill Moore says you're all going to, Bill, I uh, asked that question to Bill Moore. Bill said to me, Fred, we're all going to be dead. No one is even going to know this. A high school was there. Um, that's a tough one. Okay. I, I don't know if I could answer no, that. No, don't. I I'd don't have need to, to put see, you on the spot. I'd have to see more about it. Of course, of course. Yeah. What do you think, Scott? Well, frankly, I'd like to see the, the first scenario is that because what, what are they going to do with the old building? That's right. You know, and there's two You're talking about, I think, tearing it down and selling the land or something. Yeah, well, yeah, you know. But keep a historical thing. You know, in other words, yeah, keep right. one. Oh, the, uh, you mean build something else there? Is that what yeah, you're talking well, about? Well, they're talking about they'd keep part of the building. I think if I understand that. Jim Moran's the expert, not me. Right, right. They'd keep part of the building. It would be look kind of a historical place. You know, you know right. like that second floor room you have now. Or... Perhaps just get rid of it all and sell it to developers. To no. be, to be. Yeah. No, I'd rather leave the school there than okay. sell it to developers because you know what's going to come there. Good. The commissioners need to hear. You know, whether right. what right. side of you, Scott? What do you think? You yeah, no, it. I agree. I, I think that I'd rather see them rehab. You know, the, that the building. Old building. Okay. And yeah. it saves the expense of building a new building. I mean, but and I know dollars and cents enter into it, but dollars and cents shouldn't be the entire. Okay. Driver there. Well, gentlemen, look, you were great as always. Thanks for coming on this well, show. Thanks, okay. Thank please you. say hi to Kay, Kay and Al. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Keep Al out of trouble. Keep him out of Dunkin' Donuts, would you? <laughs> okay. And Scott, I'll see you. You see me and Mr. Nesbitt sitting in the courtyard yes. drinking coffee. Yes. Okay. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching Conversations with Fred. Uh, my time's up. Thank you for your time. And we're going to see you next time.